So I uh, just wanted to do a quick kind of impromptu video here about what I've found to be the best uh, principles to have a good lean gaining phase. Okay, so why did I want to do this? Well, I've, uh, I've made pretty good progress over the last little while uh, to the point where I've got people in my in my life and in the gym uh, asking me, okay, what the hell are you doing? So I figured it'd be a good opportunity to address those. <laughs> also, the other reason being that um, the gyms are going to be closed again and these principles I'm going to have to put on hold. Uh, but I've been making pretty good progress. Uh, I've been, like, I, I look pretty good uh, considering this is my first time doing a what I would call a pro a proper uh, type lean gaining uh, cycle. And, and it's been, like I say, six weeks. Uh, so like, I've got noticeable, noticeable mass uh, improvements. So, so these principles, um, I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going to basically give some I, I could do a whole video on all of them, basically. So the, I'll, I'll try to give some sources where you can find basically the same information I found if you find this helpful. helpful. Okay, so principle number one is going to be to manage expectations. So important. And you can learn a lot about this. Actually, uh, Steve Shaw talks a lot about this kind of stuff. An interesting one would be Jordan Peterson. He talks about often uh, targets, targets you want to aim at. Have a target that is both ambitious, but and and so hitting it would be an achievement, but a target you can actually hit, so realistic. But managing your expectations, so freaking important. And like some, some recent uh, stories came up that, that emphasize the importance of this. There was the, uh, I think I talked elsewhere about, there was some guy, what was his name? Seedman, Joel Seedman, something saying you can gain seven, uh, what was it? Like 17 pounds of muscle in six weeks or something. And, and then Conor McGregor coming out and saying, oh, gain like 30 some pounds in, in a few months. It's like, if those are your expectations, then this, this ties into the next one. Then what you're going to do is you're going to eat to accommodate that and get really fat. So have have realistic expectations for yourself. Got my shirt back on. Um, I thought I should mention it on the on the topic of uh, expectations. What are realistic expectations? Well, it's going to vary person to person, depending on how advanced you are and how long you've been lifting and so on. Um, for me, uh, natural. Uh, in the last six weeks, I think that I've been doing all these things. I've put on, oh my goodness, uh, about, about give or take 10 pounds, <laughs> half and half, uh, about five pounds fat, about ha uh, five pounds non-fat. Now that's that also is going to include some like water weight, a lot, probably most of it. So my, my guess is true lean gains, maybe a pound or two. Uh, in so half a pound a month is probably realistic for most people who are beyond the novice stage, just, just as a ballpark. So when you're, you're setting up your expectations to go on to the next step, which is to uh, set up your calories. Okay, so after managing uh, expectations, we need to manage our calories to match those expectations. So in other words, if you were expecting to build, as I gave the example, if you're expecting to build uh, 30 pounds of muscle in three months, then you would have to eat in a caloric surplus to support that. Instead, since we want to have realistic expectations, remember, this is about lean gaining, so gaining muscle, but at a slow enough rate that you're not going to add fat or 
not add too much fat because fat gain is going to be inevitable. So manage your calories to sort of match your expectations. And um, who is it that talks about these? Uh, well, Faz lifts, lifts actually. Uh, I've come to him more recently. He's got a lot of good stuff on this type of thing. Uh, Tom Venuto is an excellent source as far as uh, dietary type things. He's written articles all about uh, how you would structure your calories based on depending on the different types of gaining uh, protocol you're looking to do food wise. So he's, he's probably the best go to. Okay, so for the third tip I've found to be helpful, or third principle, it would be to build a training program around progressive overload. And when I say progressive overload, I mean progressive overload or uh, progressive lifting with consistent technique. So I found there's a lot of benefit in trying to get stronger. Stronger doesn't necessarily mean uh, heavy weights for two or three reps. It means increasing the poundage you can lift within whatever rep range you can safely do. Uh, personally, I like six to eight reps, that type of thing. And you try to lift heavier within that rep range. And once you get to the top end of that, uh, add poundage. Um, add, you're adding reps, you're adding, um, you're, you're adding weight. Basically, so you want to structure your program to sort of fa facilitate this. So um, like one thing I've found to be helpful is I'll have one day where I'm really focused on progression on certain lifts. And then the then have another day when I come back to that muscle group where I'm trying to basically facilitate that. So I might do some like high rep stuff to just try to uh, get my my muscles improved in that aspect of it. Or I might try really low reps at, like to get the, the, the momentary strength up. So uh, basically you're just trying to do that. Now there's a lot of excellent sources out there that, that talk about how to structure your program for progressive overload. Probably one of the first ones I came across was uh, Ben Bukowski, and he's excellent talking about form, talking about execution, those kinds of things. Um, <laughs> Greg Doucette, harder than last time. That philosophy is what it's all about. Um, Tom Venuto actually talks about this quite a lot when he's talking about training. He really emphasizes the, the uh, importance of progressive overload. Principle four, track, measure, and adjust. You need to track your workouts. This is to help with the progression. You need to track what you eat. Uh, this is to help with the adherence and making sure that you're on target with where you want to be. I even find it helpful. I've got this Fitbit. I uh, track my daily caloric expenditure. Yes, it's not very accurate, but it gives me an idea, okay, day to day, how much uh, activity I'm doing. Uh, just to get an idea. So uh, good, interesting sources for this, or where, where it got me thinking about this. Uh, one of the, the first one's a bit obscure, probably to most people, a guy named Pierre Maguire. He used to be on the radio on sports channels, and he used to advise uh, GMs and, and those kinds of things to uh, make a plan, stick with a plan, and adjust as necessary. And that's kind of what you're doing here, is you've, you've got your plan, uh, as, as I said before, and now we're tracking it and measuring it and seeing kind of where we need to tweak it to. And and this becomes important. Uh, like for me, I, I've had to gradually up my calories if after a few days I wasn't gaining weight. Um, another person that pointed me in this direction was uh, my friend Dylan Bercy, who you may or may not have heard of. He's uh, he's he's kind of new to the bodybuilding world, but has made a lot of progress recently. And um, when I was talking to him... Uh, it was probably a couple of years ago now and was saying what I wanted to accomplish and that. And he said, well, get a food scale. They're cheap and they're effective and they can help you uh, be much more precise with your food. And my goodness, has that been helpful. And finally, patience, consistency, adherence. All the people I've mentioned have had basically agreed with this. Um, I know I mentioned Steve Shaw. He's often saying, you know, don't jump ship on programs too quick so it it's probably worth mentioning because you know in the last one i was saying tweak your program where necessary if you're fine yes 
But that doesn't mean changing everything. That doesn't mean abandoning a program early because jumping program to program, it messes with the other one, which is trying to have progression. So uh, stick with it. It's not a fast process. It's a slow, arduous, tedious process, but a very rewarding one when you can lock into all these things. Okay, so there it is, my top five principles that I've found to be helpful in this, my first true uh, lean gaining thing. I'm uh, trying to limit the fat here. So it was uh, manage your expectations, manage your calories to match those expectations, uh, design your program around progressive overload with consistent technique, uh, good form, don't hurt yourself, don't, uh, um, don't cheat caveat to that but anyway um four was uh manage or, or sorry uh, measure track everything and adjust where necessary and then finally just have some patience and consistency and, and stick with it okay that's it next time uh...